Tom went from being laid off from a company that he's been at for decades to getting a property that's cash flowing him $5,000 to $6,000 per month. So in this episode, he's going to be going over all the different ways that he's been able to build a successful business and get $25,000 in bookings in just a couple of weeks. He's also going to be sharing some golden nuggets towards the end on how he's been able to set up his boots on the ground team and build a foundation for his business to be successful in the long run. He also shares a creative way to get more bookings that you can implement right away. We're also going to be doing a deep dive on his property, so make sure you stick around for that as well. Alrighty, we got Tom here, Tom, Mr. Tom Morgan. Uh, thanks so much for hopping on. You know, super excited to you know, kind of talk about your journey. I know you, you and your wife have absolutely set up an amazing property. We'll get into a little bit later, but I think what will be helpful for you know the people listening and watching is just kind of kind of stay, taking a step back and seeing you know what what your professionals' lives look like and maybe how this whole journey of you guys starting an Airbnb yeah. business started. Absolutely. So um, my background is software engineering. So for multiple decades, more than I care to talk about, I was coding and I was pretty tenacious and passionate about it. As my career went on, I led into like project management, project leadership, organizational structuring and leadership there. And so I was um, actually re most recently working at Capital One here in D.C., at their headquarters, was uh, in charge of all of their ATM fleet. So deploying software and making sure everything was getting taken care of. And, you know, we probably had like, uh, I don't know, 120 some people on across about 14 teams of software developers. And then January hit. <laughs> and in January, they decided they were going to have a big layoff and they laid off about 1,100 people. Uh, maybe a little bit more in this particular role of leadership that I was in. And so they let me go. Now, fortunately for me, I had already touched base with you, Preston, as you know, way back before, you know, several months before then was already, um, I think I registered for the, the training and, um, but I just uh, couldn't, couldn't get free from the gravitational pull of work. And I know you've talked a lot about that and it's all true. Like these corporate gigs just suck the life out of you. And um, so I had to put this all on pause for a few months as we had a bunch of end of year activities that consumes everybody. So anyway, in a way, uh, the layoff was a kind of a favor to me and they gave me a really great severance package when that happened. And my wife was um, helping take care, do some caretaking for uh, an, an individual who was disabled. And um, so... When all that happened, we just made a decision. We're going for it. We dropped everything. She resigned from her position and and we started on this journey and we're like, this is it. This is going to be really fun. And we looked at, we continue to look at it like it is an adventure. And I think that's important. Like, don't look at it like this horrible situation that's risky. Look at it like an adventure and keep your, your attitude kind of positive. And that's, that's kind of what we're doing. I, I continually talk my wife off the ledge because she's... <laughs> frequently saying, I don't belong in this. I'm not a corporate person. I can't do this. And I'm like, you know, just don't worry about it. I'll help you through it. We'll, we'll make it. And we get, we, we've done it. So that's kind of the low and short of the, my, my background. And, uh, you know, I chose this too, because to be honest with you, as you've talked about many times, Preston, I honestly just got sick of the corporate life. I, I really just got tired of it. Um, I'm ready to do something else in my life and um, a little bit more liberating. And I've always had sort of an interest in real estate. And when I ran into you on Instagram, like I said before, I, I had been following you on Instagram for at least a year, watching all your little videos. And I was like, man, this, this looks like a model that'll work. It's low risk, high output, pretty easy to implement. I have the funding that I need. And so it, it all just kind of uh, aligned. And I appreciate that, uh, Preston. I've told you that many times, like, man, you know, what you've done is really a life changer for us, for sure. No, and I appreciate that, Tom. And thanks for the background. I'm looking at your property right now. We'll get to it here in a little bit. But, um, you know, something that I think about that resonated with me, um, you know, when you're telling your story is I think a lot of people kind of get caught up in like climbing that corporate ladder, right? And trying to get to that next position. But I think people fail to realize like the, the next rung that you take, it's just going to Take a little bit more of your soul. Take a little bit more of your time. Um, and so right. you're getting paid a little bit more, but that's kind of like I. I'm thankful that I had that realization pretty early on in my corporate journey. And not saying that a corporate life is bad at all, right? Like I think you know you can still right. make it work, but having something on the side is, I think, it's not like a nice to have at this point. I think it's a necessity for you know most people. And I'm glad that you you know you and your wife were able to you know, kind of spearhead that and um, you know kind of go off on that journey and make it an adventure. Like you said, it doesn't always have to be monetarily. I think also 
it helps us grow as people um, as you kind of start something that you're uncomfortable with. Absolutely. And when we what we've commented on a lot and had conversations about is how fun this is. Like we, I, I'm just going to be completely honest, we have been working our butts off to get that place set up. Um, we, we were probably more hands-on. We wanted to do that intentionally because, you know, we wanted to learn the business. We wanted to learn all the ingredients. What? How do you make the sausage? Fortunately for me, I have a camper trailer. I turned it into my mobile workplace and we just took the camper to the unit. We plugged it in and we set everything up ourselves. We started recruiting people and, you know, kind of like followed your framework. But that was very instructive. Like we really learned a ton by do it by doing that, I, I know everybody can't do that, and we're not going to do that next time. Next time, we, we might do that with the camper, but I'm going to delegate so much more, and you know, sort of get ahead of the curve. We had a couple, you know, little impediments that we had to deal with r- related to the landlord. Super sweet lady, and um, you know, just <clears throat> really embraced the idea. Took a little bit of convincing, but not too much, and she thought about it. And um, she's in real estate herself. And then she got back and said, yeah, let's, you know, let's go ahead and talk through the details. But um, she, you know, no harm here, but, you know, she did, you know, wanted to do her due diligence. And so she probably consumed about, I would say, three weeks to a month of our time just getting, talking to lawyers and, you know, waiting on them. And so there was all this lag time where we were like just waiting and waiting and waiting and I got to the point where I'd be honest with you, I started looking at other places like maybe this isn't going to work out. So fortunately, um, it came through. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously any business, it's not like a linear line to be successful, right? There's going to be bumps and challenges in the road. I'm sure you're well aware. But speaking of, how did you how did you find and choose your first property? Because great question. Again, just the whole process that you had laid out, we, we learned so much from just actually doing it. And you're going to make mistakes, but that's life. And the The good, don't look at mistakes as a negative thing. Look at them as a positive because you're going to learn something. So we were kind of looking in the local area around Maryland, D.C., you know, because we were here. We thought, well, let's try something more near us. And so we were actually looking in Annapolis, Maryland, where the um, Naval Academy is. It's down by the water. We, I I was calling people and I was getting some responses and, and I checked the laws, what I thought were the laws. But there's like this Anne Arundel County, and then there's the the city, and I didn't see the city stuff yet. That hit me in the head when I called a landlord, and he said, "Well, how are we going to deal do with this with the Annapolis regulations on STRs? They they have limited amounts." And I was like, "Oh, dang! I, I probably lost about a week and a half of time, just stop spinning my wheels doing that." And so, nevertheless, I dropped that like a hot potato and. Um, actually, my wife found this property. It's 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 on the other side of the Chesapeake Bay, and it's not where I was looking. And I, I to be honest with you, when I first saw it, I was kind of like, I don't know, that's a beautiful piece of property, but I'm not sure people are going to want to go here. <laughs> so, um, so um, nevertheless, I I actually used that landlord as a practice, you know, for the script. I was like, let me just call her. It'll just be a practice. I don't think this is going to work out. Amazingly, it did. So, you know, that that's kind of the journey of how we got there. And we we looked in other areas of the country, you know, no doubt. We were looking at a bunch of markets. The first thing we did was get the subscription for AirDNA, though, because that is a huge boost in uh, data mining. So, yeah, that's how we got there. Love it. So I know uh, your wife had a huge hand in the design of this. So, I've my, uh, your property pulled up here, obviously you just look at it and it's, I mean, it's a place that I would stay at. We were in the Northeast just not too long ago. And, you know, if we had, we know, if you guys were alive, we would have definitely stayed here. Um, You're welcome. I I mean, awesome. So let's talk about, you know, some of the, you know, some of these amenities that you guys walked through, because I think every single picture, every single room looks like it has a purpose. And that's kind of what I preach and teach is. Like you have to have a make up uh, every single part part of your property stand out, and you know, basically, like if you're just randomly scrolling on Airbnb looking for places to stay, why should I stay at this place versus mm-hmm. another place? So if you want to kind of yeah. talk through some of the design and some of the thought process behind your property here, yeah. So um, again, my my wife is the uh, 
uh, brainchild behind the design. I'm more of a caveman for it, so I'm not sure I'm going to be able to talk to the actual her purpose. But um, I'm the same way. What, what we did, what we did, what we definitely did was uh, looked at your models, your examples, and so we wanted we recognized that one of the most important things the staging of it and how it's going to look in the pictures. So it was all about presentation. It's a sizzle that sells the steak, and so. We, we thought, um, let, let's set this up. And, you know, she was picking out furniture. We were using your spreadsheets and copying a bunch of stuff and refining it and finding the right pieces. We did make some decisions. Like, I, I know, Preston, you pick a lot of upscale furniture. We're, we're not there yet. So we just said, well, let's find out what, what we can do that looks nice and gets good reviews. And we did that and picked those. We went through a thousand iterations on that picture right there, those outside amenities. You know, there was regulations we ran into locally for setting up stuff in the yard because it's near the bay and it's very, the ecology is very sensitive there. So they, they wanted to make sure that, oh, uh, you know, we're protecting the environment. We went through a bunch of decisions there. And so I guess all in all, we really just tried to make it like a super duper Airbnb with some clean looks, some clean lines. We didn't want the grandma and grandpa furniture. We wanted like nice, cool looking uh, kind of boho-ish. She says it's not boho-ish. She's, but anyway, we we picked out um, you know things that way, and we sort of started crafting this vision and talking about it and looking at different options. You know, I posted on the on the uh, forum about hot tubs, and you know, it was really you know. Then you you actually kind of gave me the key guide. It's like just go local. And there happened to be a local hot tub place there. Online, you, you need a lot of lead time to order those things online. You can get better deals, but it's, it might take you a couple months. I didn't have a couple months. And I went up to a store. They had a hot tub. And it was probably about twice as much as what I could get online. And I said, but I just said, I'll take it. When can I have it? <laughs> you would have thought they would have loaded up pretty, like the next day. It took like weeks for them to get around to getting their crew, because it was like Memorial Day, and they're busy doing pools and stuff. They finally got it there, and and we just it was just perfect. I could not have asked for a more perfect setup that, and we ended up with. Um, we originally were going to have it out in the yard on the deck, and then we said no, let's pull it back to the house. We had to run a 220 line. Then we were very fortunate to run into right across the street from us was two handymen. One's a licensed contractor, and another guy's a handyman. So I met them. And they were just super helpful coming over and fixing stuff for us and setting things up. Uh, like that deck in the yard, that took the guy like a day wow. to set up. It was incredible, you know, and uh, they, they were really, really helpful. You know, so we just went through and methodically set it up. We refined it as we went, made changes. But the main things we wanted to showcase was the amenities in the back. And of course, the Chesapeake Bay out by the water. And we're, the property, we're fortunate enough to have a little bit of a beach. We were Memorial Day, or was it Father? I think it was Father's Day. My, I have grand, two couple grandkids, and they came down. They played on that beach all day. And I'm like, that's a key. That is a key right there. You know, so we, we wanted to showcase that. Uh, we got the, the fire table out there. Didn't want to do logs. I didn't feel like, you know, it just complicates things. Buying the logs, cleaning them up. Fire table is much more efficient. So those are some of my thoughts, Preston. I know my wife uh, has a lot more insights than I do on that question, but I'm sorry, I'm I'm just not capable. No, no, you're you're <laughs> totally good, and I'm, I'm the same way. I just kind of leave it off to the designers, and also my wife has helped us design a few things, and it's definitely yeah. something that uh, requires a woman's touch that I don't think that we're we're capable of. Um, but I mean, clearly, just by looking at these design, the pictures, and your thought process makes a lot of sense, right? Because these are things that you just can't replicate, right? This this view of, um, you know, like the bay and, you know, the hot tub is another great amenity that people are going to be looking for. And so having all these yep. things and because people think like, oh, this Airbnb is performing well, but they don't understand the reasoning and all the thought process behind it. So I like kind of, like you said, seeing how the sausage is made, um, I think is really helpful for people to you know walk through that, you know, thought exercise of, why certain things are the way they are. I also want to talk about, you know, obviously, you know, there's some, some challenges, you, you know, you mentioned some of those challenges, but you know, after everything's been set up, obviously that's kind of like the, the hardest part is getting the property set up. How, how, how many hours per week do you feel like you're dedicating to this business now that everything's up and live, you have your software in place and all that? 
So related to the software, we're we're using um, Price Labs. I got all the it, it it took it did take me a while. I'm an, I'm a complete newbie here, so it took me a while to go through all of the configuration on Airbnb, all the messaging, all the the scheduled messages, all the variables. Yeah, that did take me a while because I was doing a lot of learning and investment. Next time I'll be much faster. So I would say right now that people are, you know, we got a pretty much a solid booking all the way through August and we're starting to get September uh, folks in there. I would say maybe 20 to 30 minutes a day, but I would say most of that is just administrative, right? So my, I, I, I'd like to talk about my cleaning crew if, if you if you want me to, because we, we were a little bit late to the party to bring them on. And um, we did do some interviews early, but we weren't following. We weren't really f- happy with what we were finding. And so I just said, we can't wait right now. Let's get down there, get set up. We'll, we'll find some people. And then, um, w- you know, it was kind of fun to be local. The local people have a lot of, oh, I know this person and I know that person. And so um, we find some found some local cleaners. I would advise at least interviewing three of them before you make a decision on one. And then we ended up interviewing a bunch, but we settled on three right now. Originally, we were going to just have one, but then we, I, I said, we need redundancy here. If this person's out and not available, we're going to be, we're going to be messed up. So there was another one we interviewed. I said, let's get her on, bring her on. And then finally a third one came on, was available and we negotiated with her. She came on and that's probably a good portion of what we're dealing with right now. Cause we really, I th- we think it's important to um, match those pictures. We don't want guests coming in and saying, oh, this isn't what was on the pictures. We want it to be precisely what's on the pictures. We want top quality hotel experience. We want people to walk in and go, oh, this is, this is way better than a hotel. This is amazing. Super clean. It's nice in here. It's crisp. It's just like the pictures. And so we've been spending a pretty, we've been pretty, spending a lot of time kind of coaching them, writing a, a detailed guide for them. That's one thing, writing it, but getting them to follow it is another thing. So what we did, I asked each one of them individually if they would be willing to do a quality check uh, for the other cleaners. So we're kind of like using them to clean and then quality check the other ones and give us some feedback that we can share. That way there's learning involved with that quality check. They're learning the, the guide that we wrote up and we got pictures and everything in it. So as they're learning that, they'll do better. We're hoping that they'll do a better job on their next cleaning because they went through the list again checking someone else. And so that seems to be working pretty well. You know, we're spinning some plates trying to balance out like, you know, the timing and everything. But that all said, that's probably most of the time consumed right now. So the 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 renting part of it is going pretty smooth. We get a few questions here and there, but we're we're super happy. I mean, we it it's it's really mind blowing what's what's happening. Yeah. No, and your standard of excellence, just you explaining the process of how you that your cleaners, sometimes there are going to be cleaners that are up to your level. So sometimes you have to kind of bring them up, train them. And so like that exercise alone just kind of goes to show like the attention to detail you have, which is going to make your property stand out from everyone else's. Right. And, um, you know, we, we had recently had to let go of one of our cleaners out in one of our properties just because, you know, at first they were doing great. And then, you know, the quality started to dip. We start, started seeing in our, in our reviews. And so if you're, especially if you're remote, and even if you're local, you have to have a solid team of cleaners. That's going to be your most important members of your team. And if you ever start noticing, like we, we always give them a couple of chances, but if we still, you know, notice that yeah. we, you have to cut, you know, cut ties there and, you know, go find someone else, uh, just because that's how important it is for the lifeblood of, uh, of your business. And the, you know, something, something that translated from my corporate world was just sort of managing people. Like I, uh, you know, had a, had a ton of training on how to manage people. And how to motiv- get them motivated. Well, you don't motivate them by beating exactly. them over the head. You may motivate them by, you know, allowing them to make mistakes, creating a self- safe environment so you're not like, you know, yelling at them or bossing them around. You know, like the evil boss, you're, 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 you're creating a team environment. Hey, welcome to the team. We're so happy you're helping us out. You know, did an amazing job cleaning. It was just, um, I mean, it was super clean, got super great comments just a couple little things you miss. And I just want to make sure we go over that with you. That's kind of the mode we're taking. And um, they're, they're getting really excited about it. 
Um, another thing I tell them is like, you know, just make sure your mindset is not you're cleaning um, the, the Joneses home. No, you're not doing that. You're cleaning a hotel room, a, a superior high quality hotel room, and it has to be precise. So we, we really need you to help us with that. And we know you can do it and, um, and stage it. So we broke it into three stages. One is uh, there's, there's the cleaning aspect, right? And that's what you would do at the Jones's house. You just clean it, okay? Then there's the staging part. And that staging part is critical. You have to have the pillows, just like the picture. You have to have the chairs back in the place. All that stuff is critical to, uh, you know, uh, guest uh, responses and, and having them excited about the place and getting return business. And then the third one is just the quality check. Like, use the list. Go through it once again. You know, to I'm a big fan of checklist because you're going to miss stuff. You're you if you have a hundred things to do, like when I set up my camper, there's about a two hundred things I got to take care of. And man, if I make a mistake and drive off without the steps going up, I'm going to have a big big bill to, to fix that thing. So I got to make sure that every I just constantly go over that. Did I do this? Did I do this? So that's what I'm, the message I'm bringing to the to the cleaners, so they really get that quality mindset and, it, and quality is built in to their Love thinking. No, that, that's that's a really good advice. If you uh, are listening to this, go back and rewind that, you know, a couple minutes. Uh, there's a lot of gold, gold nuggets you shared there. So let's talk about kind of your goals for your portfolio now. You know, you have this one up and running. You, you know, learned a lot and I'm sure you continue to learn a lot. Like you said, there's no really better experience than having actually being in the weeds and going through it yourself. What is your, you know, one year, two year outlook look like uh, for your portfolio here? So I've always um, kind of had um, a stake in the ground of five to 10 units. And so if I can get there and figure out how to, you know, follow your model, Preston, and kind of like have teams of people and delegate and empower people to take on the work as a partnership, that would be amazing. So that's long-term. I would say my short-term goal, as I've said, is we purchased another house and we're moving right now. So I'm kind of in the throes of boxing stuff up and moving a couple hours away, but we hope to be done that pretty quickly. And after that, my goal is to find the next spot, kind of thinking somewhere where more moderate temperatures because it does get a little cold up here but you know people are okay with that and if you've got a hot tub that's actually a, a very attractive thing but i'm thinking somewhere in the south um we lived in florida for many years I'm thinking maybe you know mid-south somewhere somewhere where it's just a little bit warmer where we get a more around this year tendance and um you know, bookings and um, that'll kind of help us hedge when this one goes through its seasonality um, which is generally, you know, post Christmas, one or two months. That's at least what Air DNA says. So that's what we're kind of planning for. But that's the goal right now is the next place finding that. Ironically, my my daughter and my son in law live with us. He also was working at Capital One and got released. So he's now. They're both jumping on this this uh, approach too. We actually looked at a property yesterday with them, and so. Um, they're getting really excited about um, the opportunities. After seeing the success that, that we're having right now, that really gets people revs up. It's going to just turn into a family empire here, it sounds like. <laughs> um, so what is the cash flow looking like uh, on this property that you guys uh, we have pulled up here? I'm sure people are always curious about that too. So I can tell you that the bookings right now are hovering around 25,000 because it, it's like every day something pops up. We're putting this in, in the you know the higher categories on the pricing on price labs. And so it seems to be working. So I no, no, you're good. That's your question. Yeah, we're just curious what the cash flow looks like. I mean, 25,000. Oh, the cash flow. Yeah. So, so, so far I'm starting, I've gotten a few checks in. Um, I haven't actually sat down and revisited the spreadsheet. I've just been too busy and, you know, I'll hopefully get ahead of that. But I can tell you this, I've gotten about three deposits from Airbnb, Airbnb already. And um, we're up to, again, this is just a few weeks and we're, we're like, we, it was like $5,000, over $5,000. So I would say between five and $6,000 we've already earned. So I know it's not exactly what you're asking for, uh, but but I will, yeah, it, the bookings have been outstanding. Um, so I'm happy about that. And then I'm going to, you know, of course I have to pay myself back for the investments that we put in here. And, um, you know, they always say the, the owner of the company gets eats last. 
you know, you get paid last. You got to pay all the partners and keep them happy. And, and that's kind of what we're doing. Fortunately, again, uh, Capital One gave me a nice severance. So I have a, uh, several more months um, that I can stretch that out to. Uh, you know, obviously, you guys have done a great job and you guys are, you know, super busy. So I don't want to take too much of your time. But before we hop off here, what, you know, what's advice that you would give to someone? either considering, you know, starting their Airbnb journey, what, what would you say to that person? Well, one thing is I would say, I think mine might be a one-off. I'm not really sure. You tell me, Preston, but I kind of feel like, wow, I'd not, I would not have believed that it took off this quickly. And I'm actually getting these, these uh, folks coming in. The next one, I'm kind of thinking, okay, I don't know if I can replicate this. I was very fortunate to find this property, but I would say just, just don't get discouraged. Start small and build up from there. I've even talked about like, hey, well, what if we just got like a one bedroom unit somewhere and just put that up really quickly and furnished it and um, it wouldn't be a, a lot of upfront cash, but it would be another source of revenue that would, would be coming in. So I, I think there's a couple different strategies uh, that people can use there. I think that one of the big lessons, so I my in my process, and you know, I went back and watched your videos, Preston, because you, you nailed it. Like the very first thing I think you were saying was, you know, check the laws. I wish you would have hammered that in a little bit more because <laughs> uh, you said it. I was like, he said it, but I missed it. So I went back in. So the first thing I do now is, and you talk, you and the coaches talk about this is a numbers game when you're finding the properties. And that hit home to me. Like, uh, and I see posts on the forum a lot. Like um, I spent a lot of time analyzing this. I spent time doing... And I was doing the same thing. I was running numbers and calculating. Then you call the person and like, oh yeah, we're not we're not doing that, you know. And I just wasted hours, if not days, of time and energy to for nothing. So I would say, don't do that. Find out what the laws are, and and then find you know after you find a market, make sure you can do it. And then once you do it, start calling landlords and and don't take a deep dive on the numbers until you get someone to agree that yeah okay I'm, I'm open to that okay then you know what let me let me get back to you let me check my numbers a little bit and see if we can make it work I, I modify the script a little bit so for example I ask them like can you walk down the numbers for me I again to make it them a little bit more comfortable before I give the pitch I say hey can you tell me a little bit more about the bills? What is monthly expected? You know, I'm just trying to run some numbers here to make sure uh, I can do this. And they're all like, yeah, yeah, sure, no problem. They talk through it. And then I go, once I get them a little bit more comfortable and trusting me, then I start talking about, well, let me talk to you about what we're trying to do here. You know, we're we're running a, a you know, a, a business and we're trying to find a win-win situation to partner with landlords. And that's what we do. And I'll go on from there, so... That, that seems to work pretty well. It disarms the people a bit. So I would say call those people, you know, don't do deep diving on the numbers until you get a yes. And then it's not really a yes. It's really on our side. It's a maybe. Let's let's look at the property. Let's evaluate, uh, you know, the numbers. What is around it? What do the competitors look like? You know, all those ingredients go into it. But one, once you get commitment, then also, also I would recommend having the leases ready. So if your landlord doesn't have a lease and a sublease, have something that is local to the state you're in because, you know, they don't have to forage around for it. And, you know, you can modify any of that stuff and then say, hey, I, I got a Maryland state lease. I have my sublease agreement. Uh, can I shoot it to you and have a look at it? Let me know what you think. Having that ready. And then as soon as all that's done, the vi I would do exactly what you said. The very first thing I would do is start calling the team, recruiting, recruit the, the handyman and the cleaners. Because um, if, especially if you're remote and you're doing this all remote, because I plan to do that better in the future. That's an improvement for us. Having them, the boots on the ground is extremely important. And, you know, getting them in early is, is critical because you also get to test them. You test their communication skills. You test to see if they're um, paying attention. Do they value it? Do they, are they, are they a, a board on board with you with the vision that you're, you know, are they supporting it? I, I would say those are critical agreements. One of the realizations I've had, and I've heard this for years, like how that 
you know, small businesses create jobs. And now that I'm doing it, I'm like, wow, you know, I, I really understand that now. Like I'm creating jobs for these people in that local economy and they're extremely happy I'm there. And I'm like, God, if, if, if you didn't do what you did, Preston, and I didn't happen to run into you, those people's lives would not they wouldn't have that revenue that I'm producing for them. So it's very rewarding in that regard. I, I didn't expect that. I also didn't expect the sense of satisfaction when people, the, the guests text me back and say, man, this place is so awesome. We loved it. It was great. I, I just love it. So um, then then I was, just another small story. Sorry to take so long, but um, one, one of the pictures, I have a big plate of steamed crabs, which is a big part of Maryland culture. Growing up in Maryland, that's what we do in the summer. We steam crabs. And um, there's a guy right across the street. One of, the, one of the, the, the licensed contractor is also a commercial crabber in the bay. And he's got a crab boat. I was like, oh my gosh, the planets are aligning here. So I talked to him and I said, hey, would you, would, would you be interested in supplying crabs to my guests? I can put your, you know, uh, you know, I can talk about you in my, in my language on the, on the site, on my listing. He's like, absolutely. So, um, and he gives like this ridiculous discount. And, you know, the first guest came, he said, oh, I'll give you a bushel of crabs for, you know, this much. I'll even bring the crab paper and he delivers it to him. They texted me back and they were like, man, Captain Jimmy is amazing. He showed us all his live crabs. <laughs> he delivered them himself. I, I said, I told you. And, uh, you know, so that that was like a little creative thing that um, really helps out. And that's another thing. And I learned that this also from the from the forums is if you can contact some local restaurants and maybe get some discounts and just, you know, promote them while you're promoting your business and you can have those ready, it's a win win. You know, great, great stuff there, um, especially at the end, you know, bringing in, and bringing in help, right? Partnering with restaurants, partnering with these different people to really make it a memorable stay because those people are going to remember that for the rest of their lives, right? And they're creating memories uh, with their families. So, you know, love to love that. But, you know, again, thanks so much, Tom and Nancy, if you can hear me. Uh, great job on your property. You guys have done awesome. We got great. Good luck on your move. Uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much, guys.